Here are the installation instructions. Now this is ball speed eliminator 2. The only difference between 1 and 2 is that it has rollers instead of just the rubber. So here's your ball speed eliminator and it tells you for a model A2 24 and 1 quarter inches 24 and a quarter. See right should be on the screen there. Either way I'm gonna pop that up but now that's from the edge of your frame to the edge of the ball spin eliminator. Your spin, spinning ball eliminator. So that's where that is supposed to sit. It only gets installed once. That bottom bracket, you never have to pull it off again. So it should always be 24 and a quarter. Now, we're gonna go ahead and step on out here to 16, which I worked on all night last night. We're gonna go from the edge of the frame here. That is 25, four and a half. There's our first problem. We need to undo that. Second problem is last night, this was out so far that it was raising the rear end. This set screw here wasn't even touching at the clap. The clapper set screw wasn't touching. So this was up so high, the balls were literally just coming straight under the long rod. They would just pop right into there, about every other rod or so. <coughs> so this had to come back. Now I had, I had this adjusted. I got a before and after picture of this adjustment right here. This also didn't have the new black neoprene. This still had the red bushing here. So, red bushing is much fatter. That tells me this lift rod got put back to the exact position that was having issues in. That means this thing's popping way out here instead of just coming out a little bit. When they throw a ball, I'll show you. These two adjustments have to be made together. There's no question whatsoever. If you can't adjust this or you can't adjust this, you don't touch either because they're out of adjustment. The other thing that had to be adjusted last night were the collars here. And I know these got moved again because these were on the bottom when I finished. That's, there was a couple of rubbers here to add more spring pressure, which is unnecessary, but I didn't want to deal with it at the time. Those also got removed. So literally everything about these lift rods got changed from how I had it last night, except right here. This, I had to cut this rubber, I had to cut the urethane down, which clearly is loose. I had to cut this down to get this to slide down into the position it's supposed to be in, because this was back here. These are all the issues I had last night. Now, when I got all this adjusted, Let's put a video right here of how these how these lift rods ran when I was done.
Now, when I got done, there was a single kicker. There was the, sp the top of the lift rods was adjusted. The bottom of the lift rods was adjusted. I didn't even touch the ball spin eliminator. I didn't need to bother with it because all the balls were coming back, getting down there, and going up like they were supposed to. So, let's go through and fix them again today. In order to do that, we're going to need three quarter inch wrenches. Laser for the top lift rod. We're probably going to need a 9 16 It's either 9 16 or a half for the bottom. Let's check that. Bottom clapper. 9 16 All right. We're going to need half inch to take these out because we're going to put that back. There's one half inch. All right, so there's a half inch. As you can tell, look at that, new dialogue nuts to put it in the wrong spot even. So this isn't even gonna be fun. We're going to instantly, correctly, get all this adjusted. The reason why this irks me so bad is because now, not only are you risking causing calls, you're increasing the damage to your pin setters. Because the amount of pressure between the lift rods and the ball wheel, when the ball goes through there is so high, you are damaging your guide rollers, both top and bottom, your guide rollers, your, your kickers that are on the ball wheel because you're creating excessive wear by putting excessive pressure where it's not needed. So I'm going to leave this off. We're not even going to put it on because making the actual adjustments to the lift rod, that is not a necessary piece. Yeah, the far hard way here. Let's set it all aside. Now, first thing I'm going to do, because I've already watched a few balls go through. I don't know why nobody's bowling at this particular moment, but I'm going to get. Actually, I'm going to leave that one there, so you can see, you can see this is right where I took it loose. So I'm going to move the inside one without moving the outside one. Maybe. There we go. Tighten this one up. So I've already seen how far, too far this is going. Again, I made this adjustment last night. I already know this rod's at pretty damn far. Now the thing about these black spacers, it's like five or six of those spacers make up, I think it was six, make up one of the orange older style spacers. Right in here what got inst installed today was three. So you just cut in half the amount of spacer that was here to make more room for adjustment here. You need more room if you need to let it out further. These don't need to be let out. Now what's happening, as I tighten this up, this is gonna draw this back. That's gonna drop this down. As you can see as it drops down, this front corner drops down. 
That is part of your adjustments. Now, of course, while I'm wrenching on it, it's moving really slowly, so you're not actually going to see it. You can already see how far I'm, I mean, I'm a fat guy and I got big thumbs, but my thumb is sitting fully on threads right now. My nail sits between those two nuts. That's how far I've already adjusted this. I'm guessing this is going to be eight. Oh, look at there. We'll go ahead and push that back in. Make sure there's no ball there. Still waiting for anybody to bowl over here. I was checking to see if the ball wheel was centered between these two rods. It is. So the side to side adjustment on this one isn't bad as long as it's moving freely. And of course, on here it's going to bind because this rod, there's more of a gap here than there is here. So this rod is actually bent, it's twisted in place which prevents this from going straight. You'd, go, you'd have to take this, bend this one out to straighten this out so that this could freely move. That's not happening here. Just moving it up in there was sticky. I think they threw two balls during practice, which is why I was able to spot what was going on. Walking by these, you can tell when they're out of adjustment because they're moving all over the place. You only got, you only need a little bit of movement here, only need a little bit of movement here. You don't need it to come up six inches, you don't need to come back eight inches. It just needs enough pressure to maintain pressure between the lift rod, the ball, and the ball wheel. It's just enough pressure to grab. You're not physically picking up the ball. Oh, right, here we go but it goes up. So you can see that that's still way out. I can come in probably until I run out of threads. This is how much extra pressure with these heavy duty springs, how much extra pressure was pushing on that ball wheel. There we go. That's about good. I mean, maybe it moved maybe an inch, three quarters of an inch. See, now we just start changed the entire lean of the lift rods. We're going to watch this ball. This is the house ball. Boom. Right up and through. You'll, again, remember, the ball spin eliminator is over here. That ball did not stop and wait to get up there. It went right through like it's supposed to. This is how you adjust your lift rods. This gets put on later if you have a problem with light balls. This is not required, so you do not make any adjustment to that. That's a spinning ball eliminator. That's all it does. It eliminates spinning balls. Up and gone. Again, I've got one kicker on here because that one's gone. There's no kicker there. That's just some tacky, nasty stuff left over. I have moved that almost two fingers. Let's get an actual measurement here. That got moved an inch and an eighth. One and one eighth inch. It got moved in from where it was. One eighty on twenty two, one eighty on twenty two.
never mind, it was on mid cycle. Clearly, another ball just went through. Then we got pins dropping. There's no ball here. These should all be adjusted similarly. We got a personal ball. Boom. Up, through. A little bit of bounce to hit top, so it's still a little tight here, but we're a little loose. But we can go with a little bump. What we don't want, if it's out too far, if you left this out too far, there's too much pressure, it will launch balls right into that screw. And that head will get filled up with ball material. You want there to be enough pressure for the ball to make it all the way up and come over the top. You do not want any more pressure than that because the more pressure you have, the personal ball here, there you go. These lift rods are now adjusted correctly. However, I want to put, I would normally put more spacers here because the more spacers will build it out. But you know what? We don't need it. To make, to, for this to run, that's all it needs. We can just tighten this down. That's what we're going to do. Boom. Flawless. So, now that we have the balls going through absolutely flawlessly with no ball spin eliminator, we can put this back. I'm not going to put it in the new holes, I'm going to put it in the old holes. Because this will be mounted as per the instructions. We got ball spinning here, but this isn't the ball's fault. We got pins blocking the way. Move the pins. We're not trying to force it through pins. If pins are in the way, pins are in the way. That means you need to get the pins out of the way. There's my other bolt. So again, here's that house ball. Boom. Flawless. No issue at all. No ball spin eliminator. The first step in reinstalling this, I'm going to check and make sure there's a bushing in here. There appears to be because it doesn't move a lot. There's not a lot of wiggle side to side. So, there's a bushing in there. We're going to now correctly install the spinning ball eliminator. And to start with that, we're going to loosen the nut. And we're going to raise it up out of the way so that it's not blocking balls while we're adjusting it. There we go. Now I know I have personally adjusted this several times. I know somebody else came in here adjusting it because when they adjusted it and I was watching them, they added that nylock nut. They had me add that nylock nut so that it had more of a base to land on. Gives it a foot. So we're going to go back into the holes as designed when it was installed. We're going another ball. I guess I'm holding this up, so this did not guide that through. It pushed its way through the balls and off it went. Hold that up. Boom. League baller. League ball. Half inch. I'm gonna snug this up. I'm not gonna tighten it, I'm just gonna snug it so I can still move it.
Had our other mission washer here. Here, nylock nut on there. And we'll start tightening this side down. We're gonna snug it, we're not gonna tighten it. Because we still need to adjust it. Alright, now I can still move this around. I want this sitting over the ball wheel. Because the ball wheel is where this ball is spinning. Right? So we want this to just rest on top of the ball so that if there is a ball there that's not seating down hard enough to start rolling forward, this will give it a little extra weight. And that's all this is doing. This is not adding any other pressure other than the weight of the rod. So you're talking maybe a, a pound or two. Now this is forward enough, and like I said, if this hole were forward more, this should come forward more, but it can't. So, I'm going to grab the measuring tape again, and we're going from the end. That's 23 and 3 quarters. Twenty-three and three quarters. over here I can already tell you they did not have a ball stuck on nine they had a ball stuck on ten rather than waiting on that ball they hit the reset button so now we got to respot the one two seven eight because they decided to hit reset instead of waiting for the ball so we're gonna knock out Everything but the one, two, seven. Wow. Hey, we'll take out the seven and put it back. One, two, seven, eight. Turn it on, hit cycle. Alright, so, now, what I'm noticing here, we're not at 24 and a quarter, we're at 23, 23 and 3 quarters. Which, if I remember right, that is the Model A adjustment. Even though, I'd rather leave this. I'm not going to. I'm going to remove this again. So that we can get this, like I said, properly installed. That's why we're here, right? We want all of this to be right so there's no excuse for anything to go wrong. When there's no excuse for anything to go wrong, Nothing goes wrong. It's amazing how that works, isn't it? Teach that alone. If you like these speed drivers or whatever for mechanics, you're supposed to click in place and let you 
easily lock on and well however they work cool but for our line of work hey they really don't help much because the few spots where you have tight clearances that's not going to do it so what we're going to have to do here Grab a marker. First, we're going to mark 24 and a quarter. 24 and one quarter. This is right where, right here. It's nasty, dirty. You can't actually see anything I'm doing. Let's get a rag. Clean up our little work spot here. Now again, it's not sitting there. The lift rods have been adjusted. We have yet to see a ball stop and spin on the ball wheel. Woo, that's dirty. Alright, so now, now we got a clean surface. Let's try this again. Grab my marker. Come over 24 and a quarter inch. Hey, you can see that line. What? You can see that much better. So now that is where the side of the mount should be keep this. So, now we'll take our bracket. We'll put it in the right way. We're going to line up the edge of the bracket with that line because that's right where we want it to be, right? So I don't know what he did here. Somehow when he put this in, that wasn't right. So we're right on the line, that's 24 and a quarter. So we can stay on the line. And we're gonna have to pull this back up. Because while doing this, we need this to be over here. So we are right on the line, 24 and a quarter. Right there. do is when I tighten this down I want to make sure this stays off to that left side Snug down. 
Grab our tape. Check one last time. I don't know what the hell's going on here. Apparently I can't measure today. Or something. do get this part we're actually going to take the the actual eliminator rod off of here so we can let it sit and get it mounted because again, I don't like wasting my time and that's what I'm doing right now so let's get this off get this measured out Properly installed. Boy. Our half inch bolt to the center here. We're going to take this out. Now that we have just the plate, it's getting broken in. We're gonna put the plate down. Now we're gonna get this measurement. Drop that down off the end. 24 and one quarter. So we want it right there. That is 24 and a quarter. So we're basically right in between the A and the adjustment made by someone else. So what we're going to do is mark a hole. I'm shooting for right in the middle of the frame here. Like so. If I line those two up on that hole, just like that. I'll break out the measuring tape. Yep, there's twenty-four and a quarter right there. Thing to do is have a punch with some tip, and this doesn't get as centered as you can. Make yourself a nice little dimple that'll give your Give your drill bit somewhere to rest into. We're gonna put a dab of oil right there where we're working. You want pressure, but not too much pressure.
Got our two holes started. As you can tell, this is going to get a little sketchy. Again, we want to save our drill bit, so another drop of oil. Things are about to get sketchy. I did there. Get a piece of rod. Got it through the hole next to it. It's just, just slightly smaller than that hole. <coughs> but what it did was help the bit keep from walking over. Since these are so close. we have our corrected holes. We should be able to take this Salem's Prayer lose a washer Now that that's all mounted up, sit with the bolts in it, we'll measure this out. Twenty-four and one quarter.
Now we need our long bolt. Bit of oil in here. Passing through. Right at the end there. Ball on 10. I'll just fall apart so I'm going to handle this real quick. Get this snug. That's all it needs to be anyway. Well, in front of the big cushion, I can shut it off, reach through, I'm not going to. Reach up here, back of the pool wall. Another four out of range. Pull. One, two, three, shut it off. So that we can lift the curtain, look for dead wood, which there is, and we'll go looking for a bin hook because they never stay at the ends. Pull it off. Machine on. Up. Well, it's starting to stop. Loose this, let the lower down. Start with that. Now see, I'm all the way forward here, and I'm still a little bit back here because we're going, we're having to go so low to get to the top of the ball. So if you move these back, that's what you're basically making this into, is, is the long lift, the long rod.
Which, if you haven't figured out yet, the reason why they call them long rod and short rod. Here's your short rod. Comes right up to here. Here's your long rod. Goes way down through there, back up over here. This long is this rod is long. This rod is short. Short rod, long rod. I think we're still bowling. So when we started, a little lower than I want. Oh, yeah, it's a When we started, this was slightly forward. It was like if I put a level on here, it'd be bubble up. The ball was turned on like 27, ball on 27. Now it's sitting more, right the bottom is low. That just about perfect. So I'm going to take that down. And who wants to guess the 27? There's a ball in front of the lift rod, in front of the pit cushion, because somebody took the carpet out. Carpet cover is no longer in here. As they hit the rear button, there goes the ball. Ball falls in. Tap, tap, tap. Went through absolutely flawless. That is what we're shooting for. Now, at this point, we're going to grab our wrenches. We've already tightened this up because that was the first thing we did. This isn't moving much, so we're going to leave it where it's at. We're going to tighten that down. And this is all adjusted. We're going to make sure that's tight. Tap, tap. Roll up. No issue. Again. We have one kicker, and it's that tiny thin strip too. It's only half inch wide. It's a thin kicker strip. That's all that's contacting the ball wheel. We got one kicker. We got a little bit of pressure when it hits here. We have a little bit of pressure with here. And we have perfect ball return. Absolutely flawless. So I'm going to close this up. <laughs>